Amazing Grace How sweet The sound That saved A wrench Like me I once was lost, but now I am found, was blind, but now I see. I'm happy today to join you in what will go down as the greatest demonstration for freedom in the history of our nation. Seven score and ten years ago, a great American whose image is etched into a copper coin signed the Emancipation Proclamation. This momentous decree came as a great beacon light of hope to a great many millions of Negro slaves who had been searing in the flames of withering injustice. It came as a joyous daybreak to end the long night of their captivity. But 150 years later, the Negro still is not free. 150 years later, the life of a young black man or woman is still treated as a thing with no value. 150 years later, we still find ourselves wrestling with the same concerns as we try to come to terms with how we could have a time when we have a president of mixed race and yet the country seems to be more divided than ever. And so we've come here today to our nation's capital to dramatize a shameful condition. In a sense, we've come to our nation's capital to cash a check. When the architects of the Republic wrote the magnificent words of the Constitution and the Declaration of Independence, they were signing a promissory note to which every American was to fall heir. This note was a promise that all men, yes, black men and white men, would be guaranteed the unalienable rights of life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. It is obvious that America has defaulted on this promissory note insofar as her citizens of color are concerned. Instead of honoring this sacred obligation, America has given the Negro people a bad check a check which has come back marked insufficient funds. But we refuse to believe that the bank of justice is bankrupt. We refuse to believe that there are insufficient funds in the great vaults of opportunity in this nation. And so we've come to cash this check, a check that will give us upon demand the riches of freedom and the security of justice. Many of our young people are frustrated and angry at the current state of affairs feeling very much that their lives still don't matter and not much has changed even as I gave that dream speech 50 years ago. Many of us find ourselves on opposite sides of the questions. Many want to deflect from the urgency of now saying, why can't all lives matter equally? And we find ourselves saying, ironically, we were wondering quite the same thing. But hashtags and catchphrases can't define the struggle. Only when we adopt the position that we are our brother's keeper will we ever be able to reach that day when all lives, black lives, white lives, Mexican immigrant lives, sub-Saharan lives, all lives will matter because we are inevitably our brother's keeper because we are all our brother's brother. Whatever affects one directly affects the other indirectly. He opened my eyes, well, it's amazing, now I can see your favor towards me, 
favor towards me. I'm thankful, so grateful. I praise your name forever. Your grace, it's amazing to me. Martin Luther King said, put yourself in a state of mind where you say to yourself, there is an opportunity for me to celebrate like never before. My own power, my own ability to get myself to do whatever is necessary. Celebrate yourself. Assume positive results. Every atom that we have belongs to all of you. This is an invitation to our souls. Smell and taste green summer. Crowd shells with perfume that help you fall in love with the fragrance of yourself. Remember the atmosphere's aftertaste. It is not bland or odorless. We are in love with our mouth, lips, teeth, tongue, and the sounds that it manipulates. Your heartbeat is your inspiration for giving never-ending kisses and light embrace. I'm delighted that my seed seeks similar fields and hillsides. Remember that bad health is not death. So sing to the sun. Let your dreams run a thousand acres. Be proud of your accomplishments. Dissect poems, not animals. Burn cant from speech. There are millions of suns left for your soul's revival. All we are is complex plants covered by hardened clay. You see my beard? That's my connection to the universe. Our branches grow without limits. You can too. Go ask an ant how to overcome. Children play peacefully in grass. Blind adults like me cut grass, burn leaves, kill weeds, and then replace it all with plastic scenes. Even poets can't decipher these graffiti and hieroglyphics. But we love writing riddles. So let's keep this poem simple. Do good, give respect, and I promise you, you will receive mine. And tonight, when you go home, I want you to call your mother and tell her I love you. Go back to being toddlers on parents' laps. Eventually, parents grow old and die. That's why. Kiss your children while you can. They go onward and outward until you collapse. Watch what you eat. Make sure that it gives you the sustenance and strength that you need. And then ask yourself, what are you? Who are you? And where are you going? And if you don't know, then let the conversation of 10,000 words begin. Erase could have, erase should have, and just The only weapon we have in our hands this evening is the weapon of protest. That's all. Pull it back and, and squeeze. squeeze. Lost boys search for manhood, exploring the golden paved streets of a brick city spattered in violence. Silence overcomes a shooter's whole body split seconds before hey, yo! is yelled. Pull it, Pull it back, back and squeeze. squeeze. It's automatic, empty. 
reload and shoot some more until fingers are sore and bleeding, victims pleading for mercy but bloodthirsty, smooth criminals place no value in human life. Deafening shots echo through the war-torn blocks of our village. Decades of spillage taught these lost boys to have heart. Thirsty for cream. You know what I mean. The American dream got you on your hands and knees. They teach capitalism in the schools. But they ban the Bible. They tell you all about the business cycles and you become disciples. They're lying to you. Courage is bought off-road in dark alleyways. Sons of guns jammed to arrhythmias. Sinister melodies are Teflon-coated, locked, locked and loaded. loaded. Pull, Pull it back. back. And, and squeeze. squeeze. Eager students and devout followers take the bait while the big fish swallow us. Go down, Moses. Tell Pharaoh to let, let my people go. go. We put Christ on hold. In the midnight of crisis for the cash flow, the Benjamins got a chokehold on my community's neck. Adrenaline junkies murmur irregular mantras like, Keep it real. I'ma do me. Get money. It's funny how time flies. Years ago, we were moving targets. Now we're the urban market. Targeted in different ways. Soon as we get paid, the man wants his check back. Well, our kids get left back and the school systems backtrack pull it back and, and squeeze faster slugs hit kids cracking sternums depositing life lessons right into the right ventricle releasing the anger pent, pent up, up inside, inside the oppression pressure, pressure cooker. cooker upstanding women become hookers selling flesh in the interest of clocking, clocking those, those dollars suckers and pesos the police chase bros around the tenements but the truth is self-evident the inhabitants of this country still, still go hungry. hungry for the proof isn't in the pudding it's the fourth it's in the pudding of your faith in these small green mm -hmm. rectangles when the will is over your eye, you can't see from all the angles. They wash your thinking cap. Now your brain is star spangled. Jingle, jangle. Music to your ears. Or a precursor for tears. If your worst fear is losing your last dollar, you might as well pick up that slave car. And begin the cycle again. Whether it's pounds or yen. That money ain't your friend. You're talking, talking nonsense. nonsense. Capitalism, Capitalism ain't got no conscience. conscience. Like the criminal who pull it back. And, and squeeze, pop, pop, two shots invested into this lost boy's chest. With no return or added value. He prays to God as his pulse weakens. Last breath taken, January 18th, MLK weekend. Pull it back and squeeze. Our lives begin to end the day we become silent about things that matter. What if I said our lives matter instead of saying black lives matter? Would that make you feel better, more comfortable? Would you feel included? When the Declaration of Independence was signed by 56 men, when poplar trees demanded the hanging of black men, when Mamie Till declared an open casket, did our lives matter? There was a time that we were three-fifths important, biding our time for inclusion fought and died in every war, but claiming America's freedom. But when liberty rang, we became the back of the bus, wait your turn, second class citizens. Did our lives matter when Lincoln signed the Emancipation Proclamation, knowing that in his mind, we have become an inferior state? What about Margaret Sanger? singing a song of extermination. It's funny when those who stake their claims with all lives matter indirectly white out the discrepancies of a judicial system that blatantly proves otherwise. Does Rodney King matter? Does Katrina matter? What about Central Park Five? And let me throw in Jenna Six. And how could we ever forget the Tuskegee experiment? If it accommodates you 
All lives do matter. But are you willing to lay down white privilege that prevents you from looking back? There's a lump under the rug that we all are accounted for. Our lives matter too. But it neglects the splinter between the fingernail. It ignores our black children from coming home at night. It pretends that disparity is nothing more than an old wives' tale. So yes, our lives matter too. We just color code it so you can taste the flavor of our pain. No cream, no sugar, just a medium-sized cup of coffee of black bitterness. Black lives matter, even as America continues to pretend that they do. Thank you. Am I my brother's keeper? His arms no longer show the express way to euphoria. Track marks reveal the traffic jam of scabs detouring him to Blue Bandit's calf. Instead, am I my brother's keeper? He punches in at around 3 a.m. The corner becomes his office window. A Glock 9 becomes his insurance policy but it doesn't mean it covers his health care. Am I my brother's keeper? He's infatuated with guns and women, fully loaded when he pulls his trigger, both life and death are conceived. Dead bodies buried in the Providence River, newborn babe at women and infants, both missing persons not even cared for. Am I my brother's keeper? Am I my brother's keeper? To keep my eyes closed and head down, ignoring his ignorance, displaying my distaste for his discrepancies, dissolving my, my scruples, degrading my decisions. Am I my brother's keeper? We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but our false principles force us to look the other way. We all read the gospel according to mind, mind your own, own business. business. The manuscript that proclaims it has nothing to do with me. The section of the Sora which contains verses about selective seeing. The Torah which tells us to tread lightly towards other people's troubles. Am, Am I, I my brother's, brother's keeper? keeper? We educate ourselves for the betterment of self. We learn not to lean in on the lives of others. We grasp onto the mistakes we make and avoid any conflict or confrontation. As crazy as it sounds, when strangers make noise, we draw the shades over our ears, blocking their sounds with our mouths muted, witnessing domestic drama with our eyes closed. Oh, we'll shout from the mountaintop over racial inequalities. We'll make noise when gas prices soar. We'll even call out those that abuse their political positions. But when Leroy is beating his wife and our next door neighbors being robbed by Debo, when Keisha's all cracked out and seven months pregnant from her uncle, from that time she went down south. We're, We're so quiet. We get tunnel vision. We'll even cringe. When we hear about what happened at Penn State, Chris Brown and Rihanna. R. Kelly or O.J. Simpson. Don't, don't even go, go there. there. We don't make eye contact with the less fortunate. It draws unwanted responsibility. We shy away from other people's pain. And make up the guilt with turkey and Christmas donations. Shame holds us hostage to force charity so the chump change we contribute to these charitable organizations will only give us a false sense of godliness. Am I my brother's keeper? Yes, yes I, I am. am. Hunger visits the rich and the poor. Calamity keeps a blind eye to whomever walks in its path. And we can't wait for another Katrina or Rita or Fukushima to find it in our hearts to give. As if it wipes the slate clean and keeps the guilt off our turned backs. Life tsunamis happen on a daily, causing, causing the, the foreclosure, foreclosure of our souls to suicide's bittersweet serenade. serenade. People pawn off their principles in exchange for putting proper provision on the table. Starvation is a universal language of poverty. But we are deaf to the travesty of hungry bellies. The stench of neglect is still here. The stain of apathy won't go away. The ugliness of Wall Street is now highlighted in the occupation of public spaces by those who previously had 
occupations. While the military industrial complex remains a complex occupation. And the military seem to have a strange preoccupation with, with occupation. occupation. So yes, I am my brother's keeper. 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 Offering spoken nourishment to a dying world. Lighten the load from my brother's back. Lending him a helping hand. Helping him to stand on his own two feet. Keep, keep my, my brother, brother as, as I am. am. Am I my brother's keeper? Yes, yes I, I am. am. Thank you.